Hi everybody, goedemiddag or good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome back to Azure Lowlands here in beautiful Utrecht in the Netherlands. We are closely approaching the end of the day, but luckily we still have a few more panels, uh, especially streamed uh, from you here from De Fabriek. So next to me is Floor, who will introduce to you our next guest and a very important topic we're going to talk about today, learning, skilling, skilling. all the things. Yeah. It's a topic that came up throughout the day multiple times. So really excited to have you on the couch and on the like separate <laughs> chair <laughs> with <laughs> us. Uh, hey, Sherry. Hey, Mark. Do you want to quickly introduce yourselves uh, to the audience? Sure. So hi, everyone. I'm Sherry. Uh, I'm working as a senior program manager at Microsoft, and I'm also chairperson of an organization which focuses on a scaling called Hack Your Future. Yes, and we had you on the couch earlier today, yes. so it's really good. Thank you. Uh, well, my name is uh, Mark Duiker. Uh, I'm a developer advocate for Ably, and I'm also, let's say, the founder of Azure Functions University to teach everyone about Azure Functions. Maybe you can touch about that a bit later. I'm pretty sure we'll we'll touch on, on that as well. You both have sessions today as well. Do you want to talk about your sessions a little bit? Like what because those were in streamed, right? So people didn't watch those ones. And so maybe you do want to tell about what you talk yeah. about. Yeah. Um, sure. So one of my um, actually my session was about uh, the importance of uh, KQO and then how you can actually share what you're learning with the other. Yeah. And then grow through the community. And my session was uh, help. I've built a serverless monolith uh, <laughs> with, with, with a very sad looking monolith uh, on, on the first slide. Uh, but it was actually, the message was that it's actually a good thing that serverless applications are monoliths because they should only have one responsibility. And that's it. All right. Awesome. Well, let's, let's get started talking about learning and skilling. Um, I'm, I'm very curious because there's people who learn in different ways, right? So how would an organization that uh, wants to invest in skilling up their employees uh, make sure that there is something for everyone? Yeah, exactly, because so many different ways of, of consuming and, and learning new content. So I don't think you can just offer just like a, a classroom uh, teaching for everyone, right? So yeah. you have to tailor it to everyone's needs, which, which of course can be tricky, but I think you should leave it up to the persons who want to learn how they want to consume the content. Mm -hmm. So, and, and luckily these days there's a lot available, right? So you can, you can read on blogs or watch videos and stuff like that. So yeah, to, to all of, of the content producers, I would say, yeah, just try to make your learnings and content in mm. different formats so everybody can get the most out of it. Yeah. Do companies recognize you reading blogs as learning time? Is that a is that a thing? Or, should, like, should or they, watching TikTok movies? Yeah. I think they should. <laughs> I think they should. Well, yeah, again, eh, so you, you can't expect everyone to just sit in a classroom and, and consider that the only learning that, that you can offer. Yeah. So I think companies should offer time and money, uh, so company time to learn stuff. And how you learn it, I think you should leave it up to yeah, the individual. And yeah, if, if learning via reading blogs is your learning way, then yeah, then why not? Perfect. Sherry, uh, if we're talking about learning time, is there like, should companies maybe dedicate one day a week to learning or like a set amount of time where people need to learn? So I personally really like the idea of the, the time that you, for example, I, I used to work at the company that we had all of our Fridays after two o'clock, we dedicated it to uh, learning. And then, then it was uh, up to us that how we want to do it. We would just sit together and then hack a project and then share our learning with the others. But then we always knew that a Fridays after two o'clock, yeah. it is not the work time yeah. it is uh, then we could actually that when we were just um having our sprint planning we would have it in mind so we wouldn't bring more stories to our actually that our day uh, to make sure that we have that time reserved um so that's a I, I really like the idea but i also love the fact that you also be agile as well Try to make sure that maybe it is not always that a Friday is a person can can do it as right. well. Yeah. But but the reason that I like dedicated time during the work hour is that not everybody can actually maybe people have kids, people have families, so they cannot expect the employees to uh, spend evenings or weekends to actually yeah. do, to mm -hmm. learn something. 
hundred percent. How does uh, how does an in-person conference like Azure Lowlands today? How does that contribute to the aspect of learning? Like, do you really see it as a huge benefit? Um, something where employees can really go to to learn? Like, what's your opinion on that? Definitely yes. Uh, because, I mean, when you are going to a conference, to a meetup or, or in-person event, first of all, of course, you can go to all the sessions and then absorb something, pick up something, and then go and investigate on your own. And also, you can, uh, you can do the networking and then find the people um, that they are producing content. And then you can add one thing on top of the other resources that you, you actually uh, you have, you can have. So definitely networking through the community conferences is important. Fine. Maybe Mark can also uh, enlighten yeah, us I, I, with I his opinion. I completely uh, agree with, with uh, what, what you say yeah. because personally I always get a lot of energy by attending meetups or conferences yeah. or I get lots of ideas and I want to try new stuff. So I can imagine that other people have the same thing. Um, I, I would also like to like to ask attendees of meetups and conferences to just approach the speaker and, and ask them more questions or ask for some feedback or maybe ask for help if you want to build or make something with the technology they are just promoting or talking about. Uh, because it, I think it works both ways, right? So uh, the, the speaker is there to share knowledge and to also interact with, with the speaker, uh, with the attendees, but it's also uh, an opportunity for the attendees to ask questions and, and to learn more than just listening to a talk. So definitely make use of your time when you're at a meetup or a conference to make it the most valuable for you. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I think also as a speaker every and as a mentor, always you learn so much, so many new things just by what kind of questions people ask you. And you're just like, oh, I never thought about it that way. That's, yes. that's interesting, right? Like th that's a situation I never... Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. I was actually uh, last week or two weeks ago in uh, Switzerland at the Skill Summit hosted by uh, Microsoft. And it was a full day uh, conference dedicated to upskilling and reskilling and, of course, whole importance. So speaking of, let's say, reskilling, how, how would you see that within a company? or with people, what would you give as an, as an advice to actually reskill or upskill or really put focus on, focus on that? Boom. I think, <laughs> I think first it's, it's, it's very important uh, for, for if, you, if you want to learn something to, to, to really understand. Yeah, it's difficult because you, you might not know in what direction you want to upskill. So it's very important first to understand or to just try a lot of different things. Uh, and so you get a better feel of what kind of direction you want to go. Do you want to go into application development? Do you want to go into security? Do you want to go in, into testing? I mean, yeah, the, the, the field is so, is so large that you first yeah, need to probably try a lot of things or indeed go to lots of meetups and conferences mm. to, to learn about all these different things. Because otherwise you're not really in a good position to to learn something new because yeah you, you, you might start something and it's not really the not thing you like the best or, or, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. yeah so you need to try lots of different things and learn about what's available first yeah and um, the the one thing i want to add to that you you mentioned the the meetup community and conferences and so on so um, one of the important fact is that you try to different things, but find exactly the community that you feel like that you belong to. Because there is a, mm. there is a big power there that you, you try to learn together with the others. And uh, if you find uh, your home, yeah. uh, then actually that uh, with, the, with, your, with, with the combination of your passion, actually you can scale up yourself. And then by connecting to the people, you can always get to know that what is next, that you can combine to the same thing that you are. Uh, your skills that you already have. Yeah, I like that. We talked about dedicating time to training and upskilling. What about dedicating budgets as a company? How much, like, I think earlier today someone mentioned, oh, like, it should be at least so many, so much percentage of their revenue or whatever uh, <laughs> that a company yeah. is engrossing. Like, that should be invested back into upskilling their, uh, their, their, their staff, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a thing? Thoughts? <laughs> So, in my opinion, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So, if you are a, if you are a manager, you want to retain your talent. Yeah. You want to make sure that um, people at your company, because the thing is that there is a shortage of yeah. talent. We yeah. all know that. So, if you want to to retain your talent, the best way is that to show them that you value them. You want them to always stay in the flow. You yeah. want them to learn something because you know that you, uh, a person to stay at the company, one, is if it 
it find that you can add the value or it can actually grow. Yeah. And then the budget is a small percentage that they can invest in retaining mm. the talent. That's yeah. my opinion. Isn't there a saying where it's like, uh, what if we invest in our people and then they leave? Yeah. But what if you don't and they stay? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, exactly. I, again, I don't have much to add on that, but yeah, I, I'd rather give indeed, yeah, I'm not a manager, but I'd rather <laughs> give my money indeed to, to uh, someone who wants to upskill indeed or in increase their skills, then give it to a recruiter indeed and, uh, and, and, and just get, get, get someone else back. To find and, new people. Yeah, exactly. And, so yeah. I think it's best to, need to, to invest in the people you have uh, or definitely uh, try to attract junior people and to upskill them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and don't Tying expect... Tying into the shortage of people. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because hey, there, there are lots of people out there who want to get into IT but can't find a job. But, but yeah, employers shouldn't expect one or two years of experience for a junior role, right? I mean, junior or starters yeah, should be able to get into the uh, workforce with, without zero experience. And then yeah, the employer should take care of them and make yeah. sure they, they get skilled. Yeah. I think this was mentioned in the security panel as well, where there was junior positions that yeah. needed to have 10 years of experience. Oh, yeah, and 10 like, years of experience. That doesn't uh, make any <laughs> sense. Like those things, yeah. like they're, they're polar opposites. Like yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. So maybe also Sherry, we, we spoke about it uh, this morning earlier on a panel, but for those who just tuned uh, in and are watching and listening who have not seen the Hack Your Future uh, panel this morning, do you maybe quickly want to tell us more about that in initiative? Because it's also about upskilling and reskilling and learning and, and getting into tech. Can you tell us a bit more about Hack Your Future? Yeah, sure. So Hack Your Future is a nonprofit organization that um, it creates like a boot camp, of, but 100% for free, and then give opportunity to people that, uh, that they have zero or I mean no access to the free education to go through this seven months intensive course and then learn everything that they, uh, they need to learn in order to join the job market as a junior full stack developer or front end developer. And the beauty of this is that um, everything runs by volunteers. So there are full time employees programmers that they invest their time during the week or at their Sunday classes that they teach um, to the others and then help them to to learn and um, what I really love about uh, the people that they go through this um, this course is that they have all the dedication and passion that an employee need to have um, and once they graduate they really want to actually that to, to yeah. use their knowledge so this is the best combination that uh, that the person a, a, a new employee should have because there might be of course doesn't matter that if you even hire a experienced um, developer you always need to reskill yourself you you always le need to learn something but these people since they have the passion they and then they already showed proof that they can learn everything in only seven months so all of those small things that is missing definitely they can just learn it in a short time yeah. We talked about Hack Your Future. Do you want to talk about it? As a function university. Maybe, yeah. Uh, again, completely free and, and open source uh, on, on GitHub and on YouTube. Um, so it started like almost two years ago, I think. Uh, it has grown out quite a lot. So uh, if people want to learn about serverless and Azure functions in whatever language, you can you can get the, the content there for free. Um, yeah, what, what I think what, what makes this interesting is um, I'm not only looking for people who can learn more, but I'm also looking for people who can create the content. And it also has to be easy enough for people to, to add new content. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're definitely not there yet uh, because I think we have to make it even easier for people to, to add new stuff. Yeah. Um, but ideally, I want people to go through the one of the Azure Functions University lessons and then feel confident enough that they also can contribute uh, another lesson, uh, for instance. So I think that will be the, the ideal situation. Uh, hopefully there within maybe a couple of months or a year or something. Um, but yeah, I would like to need help like, learn uh, people, but also that they give back in the form of adding new content. That's very cool. So that yeah. sort of crowdsourced curriculum. Yeah. 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 It's super interesting. Yeah. Um, so what, in your opinions, are some of the must invest in skills for companies? You are not allowed to say it depends. <laughs> like some of the things we, you know, we're, we're midway through 2022. What do companies need to invest in? 
I'm, I'm, typ I'm typically thinking of, of, of better ways to, to communicate or to, to work together remotely. Yeah. Uh, because I think the remote working is, 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 I don't is think staying. It's old. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. So that will be here until the end of times, and, and we need to get better at it. Um, so yeah. Fo focus, focus. Human stuff is hard, though. <laughs> exactly, yeah, in indeed, yeah. So finding new ways to, to effectively communicate with each other yeah. and then also, yeah, uh, learning on distance and then talking on, on distance, that, that are probably yeah. useful skills which you can then use again to improve your learning and improve yeah. writing and things like that. Yeah. Uh, also really more focus on, let's say, user adoption of Teams, like how, for example, Microsoft Teams, if you collaborate, of course, um, that really all employees understand the tool, how to use it, and so on. So really invest in the knowledge awareness. Yeah. So in addition to that, one of the one way, I mean, I really love hackathons. Yeah. And uh, and I really love to kind of that uh, because we tried it definitely during the, the COVID that the remote hackathon can work as well. And um, I really want, uh, I mean, the companies, they also use it as one way of learning as well yeah. because you because i mean you learn a lot during that one day or two days of hackathons 100 percent, yes. yes and it's fun yeah you ran a hackathon with hack your future as well yeah yeah i yeah i actually yeah i love running hackathons so yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we demo we also did it and one way that actually what we do with the hack your future is that we try to bring them to the other events so yeah. we all together, for example, go to, um, we form a team and then join different hackathons. So I love that. Hack your future delegation. Like, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> Hack your future as a service. Yeah, we go to meetups together. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's super fun. I think one of the hackathons are a great way to get to know your colleagues and yes. uh, find out each other's strengths mm. and uh, how you can work together in the optimal way. So yeah, yeah I love that. But definitely also not for everyone, right? So that's why there should be different ways of learning for everyone. Definitely. Yeah. If there's um, anything in the world that you can learn, what is it that you would really want to learn? It, it, it can literally be anything. It does Barbara not have to be stuff. technology yeah, yeah. or <laughs> it can also be absolutely non-tech. But if, if there's anything that somebody tomorrow would say, here's time, here's budget, go learn it. Well, what that. would be? Do you have something question. in mind that I want to immediately? <laughs> definitely, definitely not Think tech. Definitely not it. tech related, but uh, I, I love music, and I would love to be able to like play piano like insanely well. Wow. I mean, yeah. I can't do it at all now. Yeah. But if I could learn something like overnight, I would choose that. All right, so somebody should offer you uh, uh, 400 hours of piano uh, <laughs> lessons, and yeah. that's a great answer. <laughs> okay, yes. So. Yeah, we discuss actually music as well. So I tried a lot of uh, instruments and I could never learn anything. <laughs> so I will put that one away. Uh, yeah. Maybe I would love to be able to paint properly. To paint yeah, properly. Paint yeah, okay. I'm, I'm very bad in that as well. So. Okay. But smart, what about you, this nice. I don't know. I already have so many hobbies, honestly. Like that would be... <laughs> if, if you had to pick one thing. Oh, I can never, I can, that's, that's not in my Too nature. Many things, I can never everything. pick one thing. Uh, but I, you know, I, I love learning new stuff, uh, so I will pick up anything. I, time management it would be oh. a really good. <laughs> wow, it's kind of a burn, and, uh -huh. and, but also the truth at the same time. So, you know, truth sometimes hurts. But yes, absolutely, time management is really good. Uh, it's a really good. <laughs> <laughs> or, I don't know, management of enthusiasm, that I don't get into to like a million things at the same time, yeah. and then also learn how to knit, and then also get chickens, and then also, you know, like, <laughs> but maybe a little bit more focus would be good, yeah. yes. Okay. How about yourself? Good call out. How about Mark? me? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, good one. Uh, what I would love to learn. Well, I don't know, speaking of music, maybe singing, I'm a terrible singer, both, both me and my sister. If my sister is watching, I'm, I'm very sorry. She's even worse than I am. But I think sing, maybe maybe we could start like a band, like, sh like well, Flora mean, can do our time management. <laughs> Mark will play the piano, yeah, be the, Sherry will paint us. I can be the director of this uh, little thing. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, and I'll be singing. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can help you too there because we have a common like passion for karaoke. So, you know, <laughs> right, right, like, right, right, right. And it's not really about the singing, it's only about the enthusiasm. So it's, yeah. that's fine. Even that's sing what in different counts. languages. Ah. We can sing in different languages. We've tried that, yes. Yeah. Yep. No, but I think that's also something indeed about learning. It does not mean that you need to succeed and be perfect and that you learn something and yeah. that you're like a guru in the topic or 
amazing singer or a pianist or, or technologist or whatever it is, it's just the process of keeping learning. And I think also that's something we're doing every single day, yeah. right? Yeah. We yeah. keep right. learning all the time. Yeah. Well, that's what keeps it interesting too, yeah. our shops. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having Before me. they leave, I really do need to know who is Mark's favorite Disney princess. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen many shirts coming by today, but this but one, uh, yeah, this it's one in the top. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, th I think it has to be Ariel. Ariel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be because of underwater, diver. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Diver that's means it. diver in yeah. Dutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. that, that's the thing. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Good. So is there anything else that you would like to give as a piece of advice for anybody who's watching or listening, who, who gets inspired by the session now, who's sitting uh, behind their computer and wants to learn something tomorrow or want to go to their manager to ask for a budget, to ask for time? What is your advice for somebody who wants that, like to indeed get that time or budget or approval that is needed? Um, Any tips? I, I always say, from, uh, don't, don't try everything on, on by yourself, but try to find a body to learn with you, right? So you can uh, enthusiasm uh, one on one another and you can just uh, back and forth one another a bit, bit more. So yeah, try to find a learning body. That's what I always like. I like that. Yeah, it's really learning together, motivate yeah. each other. And yeah. So I would say that don't wait for someone else give you a chance to do something. Mm. Um, because, I mean, prioritize yourself because um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's you and your life, mm. and uh, try to go and grab your chance. So, don't sit there. Definitely, yeah. And then, uh, speaking of Mark, we were talking about uh, Azure Functions University. Of course, you did also a tech session before, but I also happen to, it just pops in my mind, you also have another skill, and that's uh, uh, pixel, uh, pixel art, right? Do I say yes. it correctly? <laughs> Tell us, how did that start? Was it a hobby? How did you get interested? Um, and how did you learn? to do that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And yeah. maybe quickly for the ones who don't know, explain quickly what it is. Well, yeah, yeah, pixel art is yeah. just drawing, drawing, drawing on a very low resolution, like maybe just 16 by 16 pixels and then creating little avatars with, with them. I think it started with, with MS Build like two years ago or something. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was completely virtual and I wanted to show some support to all of the hosts there. So I started drawing, making pixel art of all of the hosts and, and tweeting uh, that. And yeah, everyone was super enthusiastic about it and wanted their own uh, avatar. So I just started to, to, to make it for other people. And yeah, I've really drawn literally hundreds and hundreds of avatars over the years. Yeah, I recall it created. exploded yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. Suddenly yeah. everybody in my feed was having uh, <laughs> avatars Created, uh, created by you. Yeah. So that was uh, a little games as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it started with, with small games yeah. in, in Pico 8, uh, yeah. but it's like even 8 by 8 pixels, so it's even even smaller. Uh, but yeah, it's just, just a fun way to just, yeah, first kill some time, but then I thought, oh, I can also introduce them, mix it well with the technical uh, developer community. Yeah. So it was a good fit for. And I heard in the yeah. hallway track that there's a new iteration coming to a conference near us <laughs> soon. <Ooh. laughs> okay. <laughs> I have not heard those rumors. What is it? I'll tell you later. <laughs> All right, later, later. When when, when the stream is off. Yeah. yeah. It's All NDA. Right. Yeah, NDA, NDA. Yeah. So we are approaching uh, the end of the panel. Uh, um, it's really fast how 30 minutes uh, fly by. I'm sure we can all uh, keep on talking. Um, but you already did sessions. Uh, Sherry was before with us on the panel. So we're very happy to give you um, some time back to go uh, <laughs> enjoy, relax, maybe still catch, uh, catch some sessions or follow us on uh, Learn TV. Is there anything else you would like to share before we um, let you go? <laughs> no, just, just enjoy, enjoy the day. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Anything in particular that was standing out for the event? For me, it was mo mostly meeting and seeing people again in Person. real life. That I think yeah. was the most valuable thing of today. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. been too long. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and thank you so much for being with us today, sharing your opinions, talking to me and Floor. Very, uh, very happy to have you here on the couch and on the what's what's even the word for the yeah. chair, yeah. <laughs> armchair, <laughs> lounge, lo lounge seat. <laughs> thank you, and have a, a great rest of the day. And thanks for everybody who was watching and listening this panel today. <laughs>